Phil Knight once said, life is growth, you grow or you die. Although this sounds a bit dramatic, he's not wrong. Your business can't weather the storms of the market if you're not steadily working to increase revenue. But how can you predict how much you'll sell next year? If you are a new business owner, your revenue might look something like this. As you can see, predicting how much a business will bring in every year is difficult. You can have a drought one year or a beautiful spring with revenue flowing from every valley. Factors in your industry, the broader economy, or competitors taking market share can mean that you're making less than what you made last year. This is a problem because it will impact your ability to take care of your family, pay vendors on time, go on a vacation, or hit business growth targets. So how do you avoid a harsh winter? How can you have a revenue stream that looks more like this? In this video, I'll share three ways you can double your revenue without having to increase your marketing budget or roll out new services so you can enjoy sunny weather year round. I've applied these three methods to grow my own businesses, including our Dubai-based digital transformation consulting firm and Enor, a Silicon Valley-based company that we grew to an eight-figure marketing analytics agency. Your first step towards predictable revenue is identifying what kind of revenue model your professional services business follows. This determines how many new clients you need to get every year. There are two main revenue models for professional service businesses. The first is a project-based model, and the second is a recurring model. They're not mutually exclusive. Some businesses have a mix of both revenue models. Let's briefly clarify the difference between the two. The first, project-based, is a revenue model where you get paid for delivering a specifically outlined service one time. The scope of your service is well-defined and usually bound by deadlines. You're paid when the project is completed or at specific points in the delivery cycle. Typically, project-based clients don't renew once a project is completed because they're one-off, meaning once the project is delivered, the need is met. So every year, you need to find new clients who need your service. Some examples of project-based work include a website redesign, interior design jobs, compliance training, or the implementation of an accounting system. To make this more clear, let's look at Jane's project-based business and calculate her annual revenue. Now, don't get stuck on the specifics of the examples. Some might apply to your business while others will not, but the principles and strategies should be relevant across the board. Jane runs a college admissions advisory agency that helps high schoolers place in top colleges. On average, she charges $1,500 per client. Jane had 100 clients last year. Let's check how much her revenue was. To do that, we multiply the revenue for each client by the total number of clients she had. Doubling her revenue means $300,000. And to do that with the same service and pricing, Jane would need to sell to 200 new clients as all the old ones would be in college now. So let's now turn to the other model, recurring revenue businesses. This way we can move on to the actual ways you can double your revenue. In the second model, your services are delivered at a specific cadence, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually, with billing typically occurring monthly or annually. But regardless of the delivery or billing cadence, the idea of a recurring revenue model is that the service is ongoing. It's intended to renew, unlike project-based services, which are one-off. For example, a cybersecurity firm that sells annual security audits or a tax preparer who prepares yearly tax returns should expect many or most of their clients to come back to them every year. This means that you should have a lot of clients rolling over year to year and only need to find clients to fill the gaps for those who left. More on this in a bit. To make this more clear, let's look at another example of a recurring service business and calculate its annual revenue. Ravi runs a marketing agency that focuses on email marketing. Ravi's business charges $125 per month for email deliverability monitoring. That's $1,500 for each client annually, and Ravi had 100 clients last year. $1,500 multiplied by 100 total clients equals $150,000 in total revenue per year, just like Jane's total annual revenue. But unlike Jane's one-off college admission service, Ravi's email service 
is needed on an ongoing basis. His services are recurring. If Ravi wants to double his revenue to $300,000 next year, he would need to add only 100 new clients to his 100 existing clients. That's half of the new clients Jane needs to add. Realistically though, the math for recurring revenue models isn't quite that simple. To correctly calculate a recurring business's revenue, you need to account for churn. Churn is the rate at which existing clients don't renew their contracts. Churn rates vary widely across different industries. Although some research indicates a yearly average of about 5.6%, I've personally seen 20% and higher for some businesses. Let's say that Ravi experiences 10% churn. This means that 10 of his existing 100 clients won't renew next year. So if he wants to bring in $300,000 next year, he'll need to account for those 10. This translates into Ravi needing to plan for 110 new clients instead of only 100. If your business is new and you don't have data to base your churn rate on, be conservative in your planning and assume a higher churn rate. In a year or two, you'll have enough client history to project your own churn rate more accurately. As a pro tip, you should aim to minimize churn by providing outstanding service. I sometimes see new business owners experiencing high churn because they let business development activities compromise service to current clients. As the founder of a services business, devote energy towards finding new clients, but always balance this with working hard to delight existing clients. It's your obligation and it's critical for stability and growth. But then again, remember that some clients may just not like how your tie looks and won't renew with you. So don't beat yourself up too much for every client who does not renew. Now that we've reviewed the project-based and the recurring revenue models, let's turn to the three strategies to double your revenue. We'll use Jane's project-based model as our example moving forward, but the growth approaches could equally apply to recurring models as well. If you can't remember, Jane's revenue last year was $150,000. To double her revenue to 300K next year, with the same service and pricing, she'd need to close 200 new deals. So now we will try to get 200 new clients by applying the three strategies to Jane's business. The renowned American marketer, John Wanamaker, is famously attributed with the quote, half the money I spent on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. Our first strategy to increase revenue is pretty straightforward, but easier said than done. The strategy is to get more clients. Although getting more clients is not a revolutionary thought I'm sharing, it's a hard thing to pull off without increasing your marketing budget or rolling out new services. It's very possible to reach more clients by analyzing and optimizing your marketing efforts and finding out which half of your marketing effort is wasted. To start, you need to identify where your leads and closed deals originate from. Do they come from paid sources such as Google Ads or Facebook Ads, non-paid sources such as social media, click-throughs to your website from search engine ranking, or industry events that you attend or present at? To pinpoint where your leads and closed deals are coming from, keep your CRM or Customer Relationship Management Platform up to date. If you don't have a CRM yet, it's okay. Use a spreadsheet for now. Regardless of the tool you use, I can't emphasize the importance of tracking leads and sales enough. A web analytics tool such as Google Analytics can also help you understand which traffic sources are generating leads for you. Please see the links in the description for our videos on CRM and analytics. Let's check out Jane's lead sources. When Jane looks at the lead and sales data in her CRM and cross-references her marketing spend, she sees this breakdown. This data shows where Jane's leads are coming from. By studying this, Jane can decide to pull back money or effort on the channels that aren't performing as well, double down on the channels that are performing best, or look into new channels. Because the cost per acquisition or CPA for the Facebook ads was very high, Jane decided to pause it and put the budget towards attending some more college fairs. When Jane attended the fairs last year, she had learned some new things. She had spoken with owners of other businesses in her space, such as services to match high school athletes with college athletic scholarships, 
and learned of two other tactics that these business owners have been using to generate good leads. These were hosting webinars and setting up a client referral program. Through her conversations with these business owners, Jane also learned more of what it takes to execute webinars and referral programs. Jane decided to try both of the approaches for next year and manage them herself. The cost of webinars is negligible and she only pays out on the referral programs when one of the referred leads turns into a closed deal. So there are no significant additional out-of-pocket expenses. In total, Jane made four changes to her marketing strategy. Pause Facebook ads, double down on college fairs, host webinars, and set up a referral program. These changes worked out very well. They resulted in 50 extra sales on top of the expected 100, all without increasing the marketing budget by much. That's 150 sales this year versus 100 last year. Now that Jane has optimized her marketing channels, she needs to get another 50 clients to get to 200 and meet her 300,000 revenue goal. To do that, Jane can use a second method referred to as niching down. Niching down means taking your same service and selling it to a more targeted audience segment. In other words, Jane can take her generic service and package it to a specific sector and in return, appeal to a more targeted audience. A more targeted audience means a higher conversion rate. This growth strategy is easier than mastering and offering an entirely new service. For example, Jane has helped several applicants get accepted into undergraduate engineering programs. So she has experience with this niche and knows there's a demand for it. If Jane has already invested time into learning the specialized tactics and jargon for this type of admission, it makes business sense for her to maximize the benefit of this investment by targeting this segment. Jane did some market research and determined that there aren't many other college admission services focusing on engineering. So she added a page to her website dedicated to it, allocated some of her existing marketing budget to it, and found a couple of engineering-focused college fairs to attend. Because the audience is more targeted, lead conversion increased, and Jane closed 30 additional sales the following year, all without increasing the marketing budget by much. Jane hasn't abandoned her general audience of college admission seekers, but by allocating some of her outreach effort to the engineering segment, she has increased overall sales without increasing her marketing budget. So now Jane is at 180 sales, just 20 away from the target of 200. Jane will get the last 20 clients from our third strategy, process efficiency. As it's been quoted, a great sales process is like a recipe. It provides a clear roadmap that allows for adjustments based on the specific customer. At a high level, business growth is mostly about observing and documenting what works and repeating it predictably. If you can improve the efficiency of both selling and delivery, you'll have more time to sell and more time to deliver projects and more time to make customizations that count. It's all about establishing systems and processes. Let's say that when Jane's business was very new, it took her about 10 hours to close a $1,500 project. As Jane goes through the sales cycle several times, she observes areas that can be either optimized, turned into a process, or even automated. For example, she can design a Canva, PowerPoint, or Google Slides template for her pitches, and then only make a few changes every time she pitches to a new lead. Or she can develop a proposal template with standard and customizable sections on references, scope, and pricing. For cold calls and emails, she can also build a small library of standard scripts and template messaging. After Jane implements some of these efficiency measures, her average time spent on closing a deal looks more like this. She now saves four hours on every deal she closes, so if she's pitching to two customers every week, she saves eight hours every week or over 400 hours every year. Jane puts these 400 hours to good use. She spends them on marketing, networking, and pitching and gets the remaining 20 clients she needs to meet her target of 200 clients. Without an additional marketing budget, Jane has doubled her client base and revenue with essentially the same service through the following three strategies. One, marketing optimization. Two, niching down to serve a specific audience. And three, 
process efficiency. Keep in mind that many factors can impact your revenue potential, including fluctuations in market demand. So your numbers are likely to be different, but if you apply the principles and strategies we've outlined in this video, your revenue should grow significantly. Let's start by optimizing your sales pitch here. See you next time.